Hey everyone, uh, I'm back and I saw, like many of you, the new Star Wars movie and I have a lot of opinions on it, but I am also very interested in making relatable, viral, and monetized content, so I'm going to agree with the popular opinions. So, uh, here, here's my reasons why Star Wars The Last Jedi is the worst movie in recorded history. Um, it may also be the worst movie in unrecorded history, but we just kind of don't know that stuff. Um, because, you know, it wasn't recorded. So I'm just going to cover my bases and say recorded history. Um, I have ten reasons. Um, they're probably the same as uh, everybody else's ten reasons, but uh, this is going to be me expressing them. So, uh... Let's have some fun and talk about the movie. Alright, so starting right off the top, number 10. So, when The Phantom Menace came out, it was a technical marvel because it really was the movie to first introduce really professional level digital cameras. Uh, people have been playing with digital filmmaking before, um, but not to the quality level. Like, nobody could tell that that movie was shot on a digital format. And now digital technology has gone further. So if you ask me, there is no reason why this movie wasn't done in one long take. We've had a few movies do it. The Russian Ark, Victoria, The Wedding Party. Why? I mean... Star Wars is about technology. It introduced the concept of uh, special effects and computers to make space aliens and whatnot. Like, why not take it to the next step? Just do it all at once. I mean, these movies took fucking months to make. That's because it kept starting and stopping. And it's like, you know, you clean your room, you start and stop, you're going to be in there all day. You, you keep going, you do it all at once, you're only in there for like five or six hours. Uh, it's the better way to go, and you can, you know, put a movie on, and, you know, do it with them. Uh, I mean, you're using professional actors, professional crew, like, just do it all at once. Save some time, get the movie out to us sooner. Come on. So number nine, the Star Wars movies are heavily steeped in nostalgia. Uh, callbacks to earlier movies, callbacks to early characters. Uh, when I was having some of the most formative movie watching years, there would always be a rap tie-in. Uh, so like there'd be a rapper who would make a song, often Will Smith. And then during the credits, that rap song would play, and it would kind of explain the movie. So if you, like, kind of went to go pee or went to the bathroom or did something like that, you could stick around, listen to the rap song, and kind of catch up, fill in the blanks. Uh, it was very handy, and it generated a lot of hit records. Uh, so both movies and music were very happy, and it's very lucrative. I don't know why this fell out of practice, but... Uh, somewhere along the line it did, and this really could have been the movie to bring it back. I mean, it's Star Wars. It's a huge fucking movie. Why couldn't you get Kanye to make, like, basically another masterpiece, another My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy about this movie? Well, he's actually, he's busy with a lot of stuff and a lot of personal issues, but why couldn't you have had Drake? Why wasn't there a new Drake song for the movie? And it play at the end. I don't know. I've had nobody tell me a good reason. Um, I also have a, a list of other rappers that could have done the job if Drake said no. Uh, he's a Canadian. I don't know if Star Wars is popular there. Uh, YG, T.I., T-Pain, 2 Chains, Houdini, KRS-One, Insane Clown Posse, and Macklemore. Why, were they not answering the phone? Hello, this is Disney calling. We want to have you make a song about our movie. They would have all said yes.
All right, so we're going to drift a little bit into spoilers here. Uh, I presume you've seen the movie because it made over a hundred million dollars in the box office. Um, if not, it's your fucking problem. Uh, so in the movie, I mean, this has been very controversial to a lot of people, but Kylo Ren kills uh, Supreme Leader Snoke. And he does it in a very unceremonious way, which I had a problem. Because, I mean, you have the character Snoke set up so well, Kylo kills him, and then he doesn't say, Snoke weed every day. Like, what the fuck? It was completely set up for that. Uh, or you got Snoked, or Snoke on this. I mean... What the fuck? This is this is so easy. This is screenwriting 101. And I just don't know why they couldn't do this. It was it was a layup and uh they botched it. When you're creating a piece of corporate art like Star Wars is you're tied into the past, you're tied into the future, you have to manage a lot of expectations. You have to be true to the story before it, you have to set up for the story afterwards. And deciding when all of that is going to happen is a game of managing expectations. I get that. However, you set things up so well, but everybody's favorite character, Watto, never fucking shows up. Like, where is he? What the fuck is this guy up to? I want to know. You know, you have call-outs to Watto. You have his fucking change cubes, and you're just, ooh, we got it. We know this character that you love. Remember him? Well, you're not going to see him. Come the fuck on. We want Watto. Everyone wants Watto. Like, is he still in the slave trading business? I don't know. Is he doing okay? Does he have children? So many fucking unanswered questions. We get nothing. I don't... There's no good reason for for this. Number six. Alright. So, the visuals in this movie are excellent. It's really pretty to look at. Except for one thing. Every bit is bricked. And not just slightly bricked. Bricked to shit like nobody can fucking dress in this movie and I don't know is this what the war they're fighting is about who wants to wear drab uniform versus shitty just rags you have Luke Skywalker the most powerful Jedi of all time and he's just wearing a tattered robe just walking around like what the, I know he's not leaving the house essentially but come the fuck on He's so powerful, but he has no self-esteem. You have the Rebel Alliance just wearing these hideous orange jumpsuits. Like, why would anybody join this movement if that's what they have to wear? Do these people not have vape? Do they not have Supreme? Like, they're running around in these, like, combat chunky boots. It's like... You're telling me that not one of these people fighting is going to wear some off-white Jordans? You know? Like, ditch, ditch, ditch the jumpsuits, just all that. Get some true religion jeans. Like, get some style in this, man. Come on. What's really upsetting about this movie is just all the missed opportunities. J.J. Abrams left this franchise with a whole bunch of mystery boxes to pay off, and none of them do. Hello, it's a J.J. Abrams mystery box. It has to pay off. That's the rule. In addition to that, it blows its own opportunities. Early on in the movie, we're introduced to X-Wing pilot Stark, who you see him you want to know everything about him. Who is this guy? What planet does he come from? Does he have special abilities? Is he force sensitive? Guess what? At the end of the movie, we don't know. 
we're given almost no backstory to X-Wing pilot Stark. We know he's on the resistance. We know he's an X-Wing pilot. We know he's very upset about something. But we don't have it. We don't have the answers. Everybody at my screening just got up and they're like, wait, what's the deal with X-Wing pilot Stark? Is he going to come back? Did he survive? Where does he come from? How, how good is he at, at piloting an X-Wing? Does he have a bunch of kills? Like, can he do a barrel roll? We don't know anything about him. And it's a fucking tragedy. Action movies, adventure movies, they all come down to one thing. Good guy versus bad guy. And in this movie, we don't get it. On the salt planet where the guy tastes the ground for some reason, uh, we have Kylo Ren coming out of the ATAT -AT walker, lightsaber going, and he says, come on, let's fucking fight, let's do this. I'm going to take you all on because I know you can't beat me. And our hero of the movie never emerges like we want. X-Wing pilot Stark never comes out and says, yo, bitch, let's do this. But get rid of that lightsaber. We're going to sell this like mint. Bare knuckle boxing. What the fuck? Like, that's what everybody wants from this movie, and you can't fucking give it to us? I wanted to see Kylo Ren and X-Wing pilot Stark just trading haymakers, uppercuts, you know, getting bloodied, you know, busting their knuckles open. It hurts to punch, but you gotta punch. The thrill of the fight, you know, lasting the distance, like everybody watching both sides. Oh my god, I don't think either one of them can take another single punch to the face. Oh my god, they just hit each other. They're both down. Who's gonna get up first? That's called drama. That's called excitement. And this movie just didn't, doesn't deliver. In Star Wars movies, there's always complicated love issues. Uh, from like the weird brother sister thing to interspecies, all that. Um, but it's always played off in a very mature fashion. And here we have like this kind of like love pentagon or something going on. Uh, Ray and Rose and Finn and all this. But it just doesn't seem real. Uh, you have Ray and Finn both serving on the same uh, spaceship as X Wing pilot Stark, and they're all about Finn. Come on. Have you looked at X-Wing Pilot Star? I mean, he's the only guy who makes the space jumpsuit work, if you ask me. Uh, Finn, like, he's never that interesting. Okay, he was a stormtrooper, whatever. But we know his past. X-Wing Pilot Stark, he's dark, he's mysterious. He's angry at something. But we don't know what. And anger is passion in these movies. And it's just like if either Ray or Rose want a passionate man, it's no question they got to go with X Men Pilot Stark. Like, what are their motivations? Like, I mean, if X Wing Pilot Stark is married, which he may very well be, then I get it. Otherwise, like, who could keep their hands on? At the beginning of this movie, there's this big giant action scene where Poe Dameron is flying his X-Wing around uh, the, the surface of a starship of some kind, and he's taking out all the laser guns and everything, and he's just doing this as one man, and it's just like, what the fuck? Like, we know Poe Dameron from crashing his fucking ship like a dumbass in the first one, and then everybody liking him for no discernible reason, because he doesn't really do much uh, at all. He's just, he comes back, hey, uh, I'm alive, and they're like, great, who are you, you know? But all right, all right, I mean, whatever. I mean, this, this is a franchise that has fucking Max Rebo fans, so whatever. But he's just flying along, and suddenly he's like the greatest pilot of all time, 
by him crashing, you know, uh, and just destroying it all, like, uh, one. Yeah, he's just one guy taking out the whole thing and, like, getting past his shields and everything. And it's just too much of a stretch to believe. I mean, if it were X-Wing pilot Stark, I would 100% believe it. Like, that guy can fly like nobody else. Come in. His name is X-Wing pilot Stark. You know, it's not X-Wing pilot Poe Dameron. Like, come the fuck on. Like, do these people, like, not think we're paying attention? Do they think that we don't understand Star Wars? No. I think they don't understand Star Wars. And that brings us to the number one reason why Star Wars The Last Jedi is the worst movie of all time and probably the future. I go to the movie and I'm seeing it at the Arclight Dome and so it's costing me $32 uh, plus another 7 for parking and then a soda and a popcorn cost me an additional $14 each and so it's like I spent my money and but I got, I got a really good seat and so I'm in the thing and I'm surrounded by strangers and just like all sorts of people and we're ready to take in this group experience and throughout the movie we're all waiting for one thing and we never get it and I just keep waiting and it's getting awkwarder and awkwarder and then before long I'm realizing that X-Wing Pilot Stark is not going to have a nude scene and it's just like what the fuck why did I even fucking bother coming you know why am I going to show up if I'm not going to see the goods you know like, this cost me so much money, and everyone else around me is disappointed too. Like, we all came to the theater to see a grown man naked, uh, surrounded by strangers, and you're not even going to give us that. You're not even going to give us, like, him loosening up the jumpsuit, or, like, pulling up the, the, the legs. Like, nothing. Not an ankle, not a shoulder, not a collarbone. Uh, he doesn't even untuck his shirt. Like, he doesn't even adjust himself. Like, like why? What, what do you think is going to get me into the theater for the next one? Why am I going to see another one of these fucking movies cost me $120 to do it if I'm not going to see X-Wing Pilot Stark in his full glory? Tell me why. Give me one fucking reason. Fuck you, Disney. <laughs>